After years of trying, after failed attempts, after two vetoes by Governor Kasich, the so-called heartbeat anti-abortion bill has become Ohio law. This week, the House and Senate gave final approval to the bill, which bans abortion once an ultrasound can detect the fetal heartbeat as early as six weeks into a pregnancy. Under the bill, doctors who break the law face a felony conviction, a fine, and up to a year in prison. They also risk their medical license and another $20,000 fine, which would go to adoption and foster care services. There is an exception for the mother's health, but no exceptions for rape or incest. Governor DeWine has signed it. Now it looks like it is up to the courts. Jesse Balmer, advocates are saying this is the most strict or the toughest anti-abortion law in the country. Is it? Well, it would certainly restrict abortion earlier than Ohio and many other states have before. There have been, I think, five other states that have signed similar legislation into law where it bans uh, fetal heartbeat as bans abortion after a fetal heartbeat is detected. Uh, Georgia, there's one sitting on the governor's desk right now, and there's 11 other states that are looking at this type of legislation. So what started in Ohio is really you know, build up a lot of momentum nationally. And so, yeah, it's, uh, but it has been challenged in court yeah. in other states and has not actually taken effect anywhere to date. And Jim, advocates on the other side are already preparing court briefs, may have already filed them by the time we go on the air. Yeah, I think uh, Iowa, Kentucky, Arkansas, North Dakota, the courts immediately put a, put a stop to these laws before they can even take effect. Uh, the expectation is, is that'll happen here in Ohio as well. The question is what happens to it after that? Um, the expectation is that these, some of these are going to make their way up to the U.S. Supreme Court, and that, is, of course, is the ultimate goal for, uh, for the supporters of this bill. They want to see this in front of the, uh, the new court uh, with, uh, with President Trump's um, one or two or more, you know, who knows how many appointees by then. At least two right now. Yeah, maybe more by the, you know, by the time it gets there. And so they, they think they have a better shot now than they have in the past, uh, regardless of what the court has ruled before. And, and again, you, they keep tying this, they, they keep trying to inch it back. Uh, it was 23, 23 um, months or 23 weeks at viability. Then it moved to 20 weeks. They said it was a pain threshold for the fetus, although that, that is in dispute. Uh, now they're backing it up to the heartbeat, uh, and they're, you know, it's where, where's the court going to allow it? Yeah. Marianne, what's changed is Governor DeWine is in office, Governor right. Kasich vetoed this, and right. the court, because, the you know, Ohio Right to Life was neutral, but also opposing this bill right. before there was a switch on the Supreme Court. Well, I mean, this is tantamount to a ban on abortion. This is as close as you can get. To a, to a, I mean, rape and incest. I mean, not just about every reasonable person out there would agree that there should be exceptions for rape and incest. I think that's where this law is going to really be in trouble, is the fact that it did not make those kinds of exceptions. Also, I mean, it, it punishes these doctors. I mean, and, and it has this convoluted language that the doctors are supposed to read to a woman if, if she gets a, an abortion, which I've read it three times, and I still don't understand what it says. So I don't understand how some woman is going to be able to understand what, you know, these doctors are going to be reading to them. Yeah. Yes, some of the opposition to the bill came from representatives of the Jewish community. And they were making actually a religious argument that in Judaism, if there is a situation in which it's the health or life of the mother, and nobody quite knows what this exception really means yeah, here, that's true. that in fact in Judaism, you, if in those rare cases, you choose for the mother because right. the mother is the center of the Jewish family. And so I think you're going to see some people do friend of the court brief saying this is actually an intrusion upon our religious values if in fact that exception is, you know, because somebody has described it only in an emergency for the life of the mother and an extreme case. That's not really an exception then. And so I think you're right. going to see people concerned about that also. But they have been emboldened by this new court. You're, yeah. co you're yeah, correct yeah, yeah. about and, that. And you saw that passion. We've, you know, there have been very passionate demonstrations of support and opposition to these laws at the State House in the past. But this week it seemed like it was ramped up a bit. Jesse, is that because this, they, they knew it was going to pass this time, that the governor was going to sign it in with a new court? The whole backdrop has changed. Yeah, I think so. There was a lot of focus on this bill. It was kind of the last stage where people could 
have their voice heard per se on this proposal. So I was in the House uh, session and you could hear the protesters through the walls, um, you know, those who were who were saying, you know, stop the bans. And then there was another group out there who were praying or chanting things like Jesus. So it was a very, it's a very heightened, um, people have very strong feelings about this topic, really no matter who you are. And so it really does engender that kind of activism that maybe a lot of other bills at the Ohio General Assembly don't. Mm. Jim, is there any political fallout for lawmakers, I mean, it's early in their term, so it's, we've got almost two years now before they're on the ballot again. Will this mobilize abortion rights supporters to vote against lawmakers who voted for this? The, the latest poll shows Ohio was pretty much down the middle, supporting and opposing this, this measure, the heartbeat measure. Well, traditionally, uh, it's the uh, abortion rights opponents who are much more, you know, you know it, it, it drives their vote yeah. much more than it does the other way. It just does, and it has for years. And but this could be, you know, there is a, there is, has to be some concern at least that this could be an awakening uh, on the left uh, that, that look, this is the kind of thing that, that happens when we continue to not do enough to elect, you know, Democrats who, who support abortion rights. So, so yeah, it, they're, they're, I don't know how many actual, like in the House, for example, I don't know how many actual seats could be lost because of this. Because the districts are gerrymandered. Because, yes, uh, and frankly, some of them, like, you know, one of the targeted seats is going to be uh, Senator Stephanie Kunze here in Franklin County. She voted against it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are some who, who would be targeted who didn't vote for it. Uh, so I, no, I noticed some Republicans too in no, Northeast Ohio, Northwest right. Ohio, also yep, voted voted against yeah. it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would say if you look at the Republicans, the few Republicans who did vote against this proposal, a lot of them are in suburban districts that are very competitive. Now, I don't want to say they didn't vote their heart on this topic, but I think it is politically. But, you know, yeah, and their constituents, you could probably argue, are more divided than say in a rural district where you might be more more opposed to abortion. Well, and the rape and incest issue did, did resonate with some of these members. I know there was at least one or two Republicans that I can think of that voted no because there was no rape and incest exception to this and they, they just weren't going to go that far. But what about this argument that this hurts Ohio's image as a progressive state and that'll, as a result, hurt our economy, dissuade people from living here, cause people to move, dissuade companies from locating here. Is there at, any merit to that? Well, maybe at the margins there is, but a lot of other states are actually moving in the same direction on this kind of legislation. And there are other issues out there, including the Ohio Unfairness Act, that actually might be a more significant one for businesses. This is really the whole question of uh, protection of the LGBT community with respect to employment and housing discrimination, where in fact 600 businesses have signed up in favor of the Ohio Fairness Act. So there are a lot of things out there, and people on both sides will always want to use the argument, this will hurt the economy if you pass it, this will, this will help the economy if you do. I think the interesting thing here is that if abortion now, no matter what you thought about the issue, if abortion's off the table, pretty much for the rest of this General Assembly, and if they get the worst of the gun issues off the table, just imagine, we could have and maybe 18 months in which they could devote their energy to public policy issues, education, environment, water quality, without having these issues, which may not be as, set, they're, they're very important to certain people's moral compasses and values, but they're not the issues that can, can determine the future of Ohio. It seems like these issues never go away. There's always one other regulation you could peel away, you could... Well, they try to gin up their base. I mean, that's the thing. They go farther and farther and farther as, as they gin up their base. They keep looking for another thing yeah. that'll I mean, they get may, their base out and They may be disappointed that they, they got it done too... And guns and abortion do it. They got it done too early. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's definitely political. Yeah, yes. yeah. bring out the base and raise money. Raise money. Don't, Don't forget yes, about the money. money. Fundraising emails. Yeah. Any right. idea, real quickly, how long it would take? Has there been any projections? how long, if the Supreme Court does take this up, how long it takes to get there and how long before it's decided. Any idea? Two years? I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be months, year, years. Yeah. months, if not years. So Several years at least. Yeah. We'll be talking about this topic for yeah. quite some yeah. time to come. And there's several yeah. states, as I mentioned, in front of the Ohio already, which actually yeah. was one of the arguments made on the floor yesterday is, why don't we? Why are the Ohio taxpayers going to have to foot the bill yeah. for this lawsuit when other states are fighting it, it already? Why don't we just wait till they're done? It could get to the Supreme Court more quickly if you have opposite decisions in different appeals courts throughout the country, Correct. and then that provides a rationale for the Supreme Court to step in. All right.